Welcome back everyone. My name is Ryan Baxter and I'm a developer advocate for Bluemix at IBM. In the previous video we talked about uh, how to create a new application in the Bluemix UI, download the code, modify the code, push the code back up to Bluemix, and then see those changes live uh, in the cloud on Bluemix. At the end of the video though I mentioned that we had broken one of the golden rules of writing cloud applications. Um, and to demonstrate what we what we've done in the bug in our code um, let's go ahead and scale our application. Uh, so remember, what we did was we wrote some code, and we wrote a servlet that will count the number of times a GET request is made to the servlet and display on the page. Uh, simple enough, but in the cloud, um, that, that application has a problem, especially when it comes to scaling the application. So uh, let's go back to our application here in Bluemix, and we're going to go to the runtime uh, link here, and we're going to increase the number of instances of the application that we have running. So let's uh, bump it up to 12 and we'll change this uh, down to 512 uh, megabytes here. And that should uh, get us within our quota. So uh, let's save this and what Bluemix will do is create uh, 10 new instances of our, uh, of our application up and running. Uh, in a very short period of time. So if we scroll down here uh, to the number of instances, we can see that we have uh, a number of instances uh, that are now starting up and eventually uh, we'll get uh, a, a good number of the instances up and running. Okay, you can now see that we have all 10 instances up and running. Uh, so now let's go back to our application and try out our servlet again. So let's uh, refresh the page here. So we can see that our server was called one times. We'll refresh again. Hmm. It still says one times. Let's try it again. Still one times. Oh, now we have two. So on the fourth click, we finally got two. Uh, the fifth click, we st still at two. Now we're at three. So we have a, a little bit of a problem here. So what's going on? So what happens is when, when you scale your application, we now have, we scale our application up to 10 instances so we can handle you know, 10 times the load we could handle, handle before. Uh, but what happens is we have 10 uh, separate instances of the application running simultaneously. And when a user hits the URL uh, for your application, uh, you have no way of knowing where, uh, which instance of that application it's going to hit. So um, it may hit one the first and second time, but then uh, the third time it'll hit a different instance, and the fourth time it may hit an even different instance. So uh, because we're keeping state in our application uh, in our application code, and that state is not shared across all the different instances, every time we hit uh, the, the URL, we have a chance of getting back a different result. Um, so a very non-deterministic piece of functionality now once we've scaled the application up to more than one instance. So how do we solve this problem? Well, it can be solved pretty easily by uh, storing the state of the application in something that's shared across all the instances. Uh, so Bluemix has uh, a, a pretty good number of services that can help us do that. Um, so let's go take a look at the, the catalog and find something that uh, might help us out here. So one of the services that really fits this use case pretty well is the Redis service. And Redis is a key value store. It's supposed to be very fast and it's, uh, quick to retrieve values. And since we're just keeping track of a counter, uh, that we want to share across all of our instances, it's, it's going to fit very well for this use case. So let's click on the Redis service and we're going to add it to our application. Uh, let's select our demo space because that's where our application is living. And we'll select uh, RJB Demo Java, that's the name of our application. We'll click Create. And we now have bound a Redis service to our application. So that was pretty quick and easy to do. Before we continue, I just want to change the name of our uh, Redis service to something that's more meaningful to us. So let's click on the service and we're going to go to rename service and we're going to rename this to Redis uh, Java Demo and click Save. So now our service has a more meaningful name. Good. So now how do we take advantage of this service within our application code? So whenever you bind a service to, um, to an application uh, there's an environment variable created called VCAP services. And inside this VCAP services environment variable is details about all the different services that are bound to your application. In this case, we have one 
uh, the Redis service. So inside our VCAP services variable, there's going to be a service with the name Redis Java Demo uh, that we just named our Redis service here. And uh, the value uh, of that property in our VCAP services environment variable is going to have the connection details of how to connect to the service. So we'll have this, the host, the port, and the password that we need to connect to the service and use it. So how do we go about doing that within code? Well, in our Java code, we first need to uh, get a library that we can use uh, that will connect to Redis and allow us to interact with the service. Uh, and the library that I'm going to choose to use for this demo is called Jetis. So it's a Java uh, library for Redis. Um, it's pretty popular and uh, very simple to use. Uh, the code's pretty minimalistic. All you need to do is download two jar files. You download the Jetis jar file, obviously, and it has a dependency on the Apache uh, Commons uh, repository. So you need to download the Apache Commons uh, jar as well. And um, after you've downloaded those two jars, you can add them to your application, and we can now uh, connect to and uh, use Redis within our application. So I've already downloaded the two jar files, um, so uh, let's go add them to our application. So here are the two jar files I've downloaded. We see we have the Apache Commons pool library and the Jetis library. Um, so let's copy these and add them to our uh, project in Eclipse. So we're going to go to our WebIMP lib folder here and just paste the jar files here into the lib folder. And when you do that, Eclipse will automatically add them to our class path, uh, so we don't need to mess with our Java class path at all. Uh, everything is now added to our class path. So now we need to get information from uh, Redis and, and the VCAP services environment variable and uh, use it in our code. Uh, so the first thing we need to do in order to get information from the VCAP services envir environment variable is to parse the JSON and get the credentials from, from the VCAP services environment variable and use them in Redis. So instead of writing that code freehand, um, I've already written the code. I'm just going to copy and paste it into uh, the file here and then explain what it's doing. So I'm just going to paste the code into our class and then I'm going to organize our imports so we get rid of the compile errors. And uh, so let's take a look at the code I just pasted in. So the first method here called get service by name. Uh, we'll look at the VCAP services environment variable and find a service uh, with a given name in the environment variable and return us the JSON object representation for that service. So the first thing it does is get the environment variable and uh, create a new JSON object. So we have a Java object we can work with uh, from the string. Uh, then we iterate through all the services in the VCAP services environment variable, looking at the keys and uh, then looking at the service for each key and looking at the name of that service and seeing if it's equal to the name that was passed into the method. If it is, then we return that service to, um, uh, to the caller uh, from the method. In the get Jetis, uh, um, uh, method, we pass, uh, we call the get service by name method, passing in the name of our Jetis service that we chose in the Bluemix UI. And then uh, we get the credentials object from that service and then get the host port and password uh, from the object to the to use in this Jetis pool object here. Um, so this creates the pool uh, uh, for, for the Jetis servers and uh, takes our credentials in. And when you call pool.getResource that will return us our Jetis object which we can then use to um, store and fetch keys and values from. So um, let's take advantage of these two methods that, I pa that, I, that I've pasted in here. Uh, but first let's create a new uh, variable to use, so we're going to call private static uh, Jetis, and we'll give it this name Jetis. And then in our constructor, we will um, call get Jetis and set our Jetis variable to that value. So we'll say Jetis equals get Jetis. And getJetis throws an exception. Um, we're just going to continue to throw that exception up the stack. Uh, we may want to handle it in different ways, but for this sample, it's OK to just throw it. Um, and now we're ready to use Jetis. So um, let's get a value from the Jetis key value store. So we'll get string value, and we'll say Jetis.get. And we're going to pass in the key counter. We'll use counter as the key for holding the value of our counter. And uh, we're also going to create a variable called 
um, uh, that is an integer called counter, and we're going to initialize that to 1. Before we can use the value from Jettis, we need to make sure that it's not null. And so we'll do if value is not equal to null. And then we'll say uh, counter equals uh, integer dot parse int. And we'll pass in value if it's not null. So we can get an integer back from that string. And then we're going to increment our counter. And after we've incremented it, we want to set it back into uh, the Redis store. So we'll say jettis.set. And we'll pass in the same key counter, and we'll pass in the string representation of our um, of our integer, and set it in Redis. So what is this code doing? Basically, we go to Redis, we get the key counter out of it. We initialize a var value called counter as well, which is an integer. Before we use the value from Redis, we will uh, check that it's not null. So it could be null if this is the very first time we're accessing the Redis store uh, for the application, in which case the counter uh, key is not set anywhere, so we'll just get null back. Um, if it is null, then we're just going to set counter to be 1, and then set uh, the counter variable to 1 in Redis, and then return that, that uh, string. If it's not null, then that means we have a value in there, so we're going to parse the string as an integer, and then increment the counter, and then set the counter var variable back in um, back in Redis. So uh, that's all we need to do for our code. So now we can um, uh, go and build our code uh, and deploy our war. But before we do that, we need to take a look at our build.xml. So our build.xml has a slight problem with it um, in that it's very specific with what's in the class path. It points to the exact uh, two jars that are in the lib folder. Um, so we've added two new jars to our lib folder uh, that are not on our class path. So we'll get compile errors when we go and do our build. So we need to fix this problem. So I'm just going to comment out these two class path entries here. I'm going to make this a little bit more broad. Um, so we're going to create a file set. And we're going to point this file set to the lib folder in the web in folder here. So we're just going to copy this directory. Equal sign. And then uh, in this file set, we're going to include everything with the name um, star star slash dot uh, star dot jar. So that will include every jar that is within that lib folder, which is exactly what we want. So anything in the, that we add to the lib folder from now on will be included in our class path and we should be able to build. So now all we need to do is right click on this again and uh, we're going to run this as an ant script and run the build. And we can see that our build was successful. We built our war. So now we just need to uh, push the war back to Bluemix. So um, we're back in our folder with our war file again here. And uh, we just need to re-execute the command to push that war file back to Bluemix uh, to get our code running. So uh, we'll just uh, do our CF push, pass in our name of our application, and also pass the war file and execute that. Okay, and our uh, application has now been pushed and is up and running on Bluemix. So let's go back to the application on Bluemix here. And um, we can see that after we have pushed the application that um, there's no longer 10 instances running. We just have a single instance, but that's okay. Let's just make sure that our one instance is working properly before we scale it up again. So let's refresh the page here. Okay, so here we have our, uh, our servlet returning back that the servlet was called one time. We refresh again, two times, three times, four times, five times. Okay, so it looks like it's working for the single server case. So let's go back and scale our application up. So we'll go back and we'll say 10 instances and save. And we should see all 10 instances come up and running momentarily. Okay, we have all 10 instances up and running. So let's go back to our application and refresh the page again. So you can see we're at six now, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so it looks like it's working. So now, uh, since we are using the, uh, the Redis store to store our counter, uh, we are now able to 
uh, scale our application up um, up to 10 instances or more and um, refresh the page and we can see that we can hit any number of those instances running and we get back a consistent value uh, because the value is being stored within the Redis store as opposed to being stored within the application itself uh, and each application is pointing to the same store uh, to use that value. So now when our application is scaled in the cloud it looks it works a lot better than it did before. So that's how easy it is to uh, to add a service to your application and take advantage of that service. Granted it is a uh, very minimalistic application at this point um, but uh, it didn't take much work for us to add uh, Redis to our application and the important thing here is we didn't have to worry about provisioning the Redis service, finding a server to use, um, setting up you know security and authentication and making sure that everything is secure um, and we didn't have to ask or depend on IT to do that. We were able to do it all by ourselves uh, as a developer and within um, you know a very short period of time get uh, hook Redis up to our application uh, and, and, and use it. In a traditional IT architecture, IT world, um, where you're building applications, um, you would have to go off and request IT to provision the Redis service for you, stand up the server, get a VM, all that type of fun stuff, and that may take days uh, to complete before you're able to actually take advantage of it within, within your application. So uh, we were able to do that in a very short period of time. So there's the advantage of your platform as a service. So that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching and look forward to creating more videos. Thanks.